Police quiz 13 cops over leaked information. Rohingya issue used to recruit Daesh fighters. Good afternoon, I'm Carlos and welcome to News on 2. Now, police have recorded statements from 13 policemen over the leaked information into the deadly fire at the Darul Quran Itifaqiyah Tafiz School in Kramat. And the KL Police Criminal Investigations Department Chief SAC Rusli Muhammad Isa said the probe was launched since Saturday following the spread of the suspect's photographs on social media. Now, he said it is being investigated under Section 233 of the Multimedia and Communications Act 1998 for improper use of network facilities and Section 203A for disclosure of information. When asked if all the individuals questioned so far were policemen, as they see, Rusli replied in the affirmative. The fact of the case and photographs of the teenagers believed to be involved in the fire tragedy had been making its round on social media and WhatsApp messaging application. Deputy Prime Minister, Dr. Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahin Hamidi, had earlier said that the leak should not have happened and all quarters should respect the investigation process. A number of Malaysians backed by the Daesh militant group are currently engaging the Myanmar government in a holy war, purportedly to defend the oppressed Rohingya Muslims in Rakhine State. And Bukit Aman Special Branch Counter-Terrorism Division for E8 Assistant Director Dr. Ayub Khan Maidin Piche said the Rohingya issue was seen as the key weapon used by the Daesh to influence and recruit new members to engage in terrorism. Speaking at the Daesh Militant Awareness Seminar yesterday, Dato Ayob revealed on September 10th that a suspect from Malacca was arrested on suspicion of promoting Daesh militancy through the printing and distribution of Daesh flags. The 38-year-old man was also planning to take part in Daesh activities in the Philippines and Rakhine. Option yang baru adalah dekat Rakhine. Sebab isu ini banyak menaikkan semangat orang untuk pergi berjihad. Ini dah disiarkan gambar-gambar apa tu kejaman apa yang berlaku di sana mendorong orang untuk berkibat Dato Ayub said as of now there were four Malaysians in Syria believed to be actively recruiting Malaysians to join Daesh 112 foreign nationals including two children were nabbed during operation Ops Sapu at several units housing foreign workers at the Sana Industrial Park also arrested was a Bangladeshi who allegedly acted as an agent for the workers. And Immigration Department Director General Dr. Salim Mustafa Ali said all those detained had allegedly committed offenses under the Immigration Act 1959-1963 and Immigration Regulations 1963. In the 1 a.m. operation, officers detained 103 men, six women and two children who were workers from Bangladesh, Nepal, Indonesia, China and Pakistan. The agent had arrived at about the same time as the raiding party, apparently to deliver several passports belonging to some of the foreign nationals. Dr. Sri Mustafa said the agent's vehicle has been impounded, adding that they also found several other passports, UNHCR cards believed to be fake, and a laptop used to store documents involving the foreign workers. Police in southern Thailand have successfully thwarted attempts to smuggle a large amount of ganja bound for Malaysia when they seized 1,286 kilograms of the drug in two separate incidents in Songkla and Satun. And according to a Burnama report, a man was detained in Songkla on September 12, while another was picked up in Satun two days later to facilitate investigations. Provincial Police Region 9 Acting Chief Lieutenant General Ronasil Pusara said police found 589 kilograms at a rented house in Chana, Songkla, while another 697 kilograms of the drug was seized in Satun. He said the men admitted to police that the ganja was destined for Malaysia. He said the ganja, which originated from neighboring Laos, was smuggled into Thailand and transported to the southern provinces. And according to Ronasil, the man nabbed in Sutton claimed he was paid 10,000 baht or 1,250 ringgit by a Thai man to take the drugs and drop it at a certain location. But the plan failed as he was arrested by police. 
Coming up, Housing Ministry to refine standard guidelines on building safety. The Urban Wellbeing Housing and Local Government Ministry, KPKT, will refine its standard guidelines on building safety in the next few months. Its Deputy Minister, Dr. Ali Ma Muhammad Sadiq, said the ministry would meet with the relevant agencies to furnish suggestions and ways to improve the standard guidelines. She said this was important to ensure all buildings and premises would adhere to safety checks prior to its occupation. The standard guidelines include fire safety and a building's compliance to safety standards. Kadang-kadang kita perhatikan apabila satu-satu premis ni dibuka, eh, bukan saja dia tidak mendapat kelulusan daripada pihak berkuasa tempatan. Kalau dia tak dapat kelulusan daripada pihak berkuasa tempatan, maka sudah tentulah daripada kelulusan keselamatan bangunan uh, daripada Jabatan Bobo dan Penyelamat Malaysia itu pun juga tak ada. She added the guidelines have been enforced all this while, but they will soon be refined to see if there is any need for amendments. Dato Halima was asked to comment about steps taken by the ministry to prevent fire tragedies, such as the one at the Darul Quran Itifakia Tafiz School in Kampung Dato Kramat in Kuala Lumpur. She said this after a Sahati Sajiwa dialogue with members of resident associations at Dewan Sri Terbrau in Johor Bahru. She said the proposals will be tabled at the next National Council for Local Government meeting, in which Menteries and chief ministers will represent their respective state governments. A conducive living environment is key to stemming social problems such as drug abuse, primarily among young people. Federal Territories Minister Dato Sri Tengku Adnan Tengku Mansour said large families cramped in small living spaces do not create a healthy environment whereby youngsters can fall prey to social evils when they try to escape the inhospitable conditions at home. Ini memberi apa ni salah satu punca yang telah kita kena pasti apabila kesesakan dalam rumah mereka mereka akan berlega mengatakan itu tempat. Apabila mereka berlega pada tempat ada puak-puak lain mengambil kesempatan try sikit ni lah, try sikit itulah jadi akhirnya dia jadi ketagihan. Datu Sri Tengku Adnan was commenting on the seven suspects who were detained in connection with the fire at the Darul Quran Itifakia Tahfiz Center on Thursday. It was reported that six of them tested positive for ganja and were believed to be high when they carried out the despicable act. The National Professors Council MPN will conduct a study on affordable housing in Malaysia for the Malaysian Property Press Award MPPA next year. MPN Chief Executive Officer Professor Dato Dr. Radwan Chit Rose said the research will commence after the annual award presentation ceremony scheduled for the fourth quarter this year. I think uh, uh, we are going to research, to further research on the issue yeah, and to come up with some uh, recommendation to government as well as to the industry. This would be the first time MPN is collaborating with MPPA to address the issue of affordable housing for Malaysians. For the record, there are various housing schemes available in the country, but not many of them are really affordable to middle and low income earners, especially the younger generation. The Ministry of Agriculture and agro Base Industry gave its assurance that the supply of raw materials and produce will be enough in light of the upcoming monsoon season. And its Deputy Minister, Dr. Sri Tajuddin Abdul Rahman, said the Ministry's confidence was based on the current situation where the supply of raw produce in the market was still sufficient to even last beyond the season. Dr. Sri Tajuddin said as a precautionary measure, the Ministry has in several plans ways to ensure that the situation is under control. Kita ada, kalau dari segi ikan, bekalan ikan ada dua sumber. Satu daripada marine, daripada laut. Satu daripada uh, ikan yang diternak, iaitu aquaculture. Yeah? Ikan daripada laut ni dia terjejas apabila ada musim terkucuk. Nelayan tak pergi ke laut. Ya. Yeah? Tapi yang diternak ini, walaupun musim apa, sepanjang tahun, peternakan itu berjalan. Dia tidak menjejaskan pengeluaran hasil ikan ternakan. Jadi dengan sebab itu, kita menggalakkan peternakan ikan-ikan air tawar ini, culture ini, untuk mengimbangi bekalan ikan daripada laut. 
Speaking at the closing of Carnival Hari Malaysia, organized by the Subang Parliamentary Constituency, Dr. Sri Tajuddin said the ministry will also assist and provide aid to farmers and breeders if their farms and livestock are affected by disasters such as floods. The employer's provident fund, EPF Investments in the United States, equities is nothing new. In fact, EPF has been investing in the financial markets of the U.S. and Europe over the past years. Prime Minister Dr. Sri Najib Tun Razak refuted claims made by critics when he highlighted the matter through his blog, najibrazak.com. Hubungan luar negara kita telah banyak membuka peluang pelaburan dan perdagangan untuk memangkinkan ekonomi kita. Hubungan baik Malaysia dengan negara-negara besar timur dan barat meletakkan Malaysia di sebuah kedudukan politik yang seimbang di persada antarabangsa. Datuk Sri Najib added that EPF needed to constantly seek investment opportunities to repay its shareholder dividends. Meanwhile, on the issue of the Boeing jets purchase, Datuk Sri Najib said that it was already in line with Malaysia Airlines' expansion plans prior to the White House meeting. And commenting on another matter, Communications and Multimedia Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Saleh Said Karawak noted the meeting between Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak and U.S. President Donald Trump was arranged through diplomatic channels and not through paid lobbyists. Now, in a blog posting, sskarawak.blogspot.my, yesterday, Dato Sri Dr. Sally slammed the critics who constantly panned Dato Sri Najib's efforts to develop the country. And saying opposition leaders make an issue of everything, the Prime Minister does. And he said they will always criticize for the sake of criticizing and not for the good of the country. Dr. Sri Dr. Sali said nothing that Dr. Sri Najib does will ever satisfy Pakatan Harapan because their criticisms are intended to create negative perceptions among the people. And international business news, Volkswagen, VW and its Chinese joint ventures FAW Volkswagen and SAIC Volkswagen will recall 4.86 million vehicles in China due to potential issues with Takata airbags below to the car maker and the world's largest auto market. An official Chinese estimates show over 20 million cars in China had airbags made by Takata, which have been linked to at least 16 deaths and 180 injuries globally. The airbags have the potential to explode with too much force and spray shrapnel. The defect led to the biggest recall in automotive history and eventual bankruptcy of the Japanese maker. And China's General Administration of Quality Supervision, Inspection and Quarantine said in a statement that VW China would recall 103,573 vehicles, FAW Volkswagen 2.35 million vehicles and SAIC Volkswagen 2.4 million vehicles. The watchdog said the recall would run from March next year into 2019. And Volkswagen said the car maker and its Chinese partner would provide free airbag replacements on the recall car. Well, Prime Minister Dato Sri Najib Tun Razak last night officially declared the ninth Para Asam Games, Kuala Lumpur 2017, or KL 2017, open at the National Stadium, Bukit Jalil. And Dato Sri Najib arrived at 8.20 p.m. accompanied by his wife, Dato Sri Rosman Mansour, and Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zain Amidi, and Youth and Sports Minister Kairi Jamaluddin. The ninth edition of the Games, which will close on September 23rd, brings together some 1,421 athletes from 11 countries, namely Indonesia, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Brunei Darussalam, Vietnam, Laos, Myanmar, Cambodia, Timor-Leste, and hosts Malaysia. At stake are 368 gold medals in 16 sports, which is the highest number of sports for competition at the Games. Malaysia is led by Chef de Mechon, Dato R. Subramaniam, along with flag bearers, shot pot world champion Muhammad Ziad Zulkifli, and long jump athlete Abdul Latif Romli, both of whom were gold medalists at last year's Rio Paralympics. Archer Hasihin Senawi then lit the game's call run, signaling the beginning of the ninth edition of the ASEAN Para Games, followed by a display of fireworks. That concludes this afternoon's news on two. In our top story, police quiz 13 cops over leaked information and deadly toughest fire. Join us again at 7 this evening. I'm Amin Carlos. Thanks for watching. Good afternoon.